Okay, I've got about 7.05. I'll close my door here. Thank you who have joined us this evening. Uh, this is Dale Lamb with Gardner Webb. Uh, along with me tonight is Dr. Jeff Hamilton. We work with the clinical experiences in the Masters of Executive Leadership program here at Gardner Webb University. We welcome you and we thank you for hosting our interns at your school and for the time that you're taking to work with them. As a result of one of our <coughs> collaborative partners meeting recently, um, a suggestion was made that we begin to do some town halls for our collaborative partners in terms of our site mentors. And we thought that was an excellent idea. Although we have hopefully had someone on your campus already this semester to meet and greet you and thank you for, for hosting an intern for us. We also want to take this time, uh, hopefully about 20 minutes or less, to explain the program to you. Um, Gardner Webb offers two different program tracks uh, in the MELS program, the Master's of Executive Leadership. We offer a five semester Master of Art degree program that leads to a master's degree and principal licensure in the state of North Carolina that is transportable, and you students can go to South Carolina or Virginia and take the uh, praxis and also get a license in those states. And we also offer a three semester add-on licensure program that is three consecutive semesters um, for students who already have a master's degree for them to, again, gain their North Carolina principal licensure uh, and then be able to take that and, and the praxis and go to Virginia or South Carolina and get uh, certified there as well. So let me dive right in. If you have questions, we have a chat function that you can use on your computer. Dr. Hamilton will be answering those questions as we go. So I'll start out <clears throat> with the five semester Master of Arts degree program. Um, students take a six credit hour course each semester, male 601 through 605. A brief explanation of those is 601 is introduction to the school principalship. 602 is research and assessment. 603 is law and finance and resource management. 604 is curriculum and instruction. 605 is executive leadership, leadership style, self-assessment, and dispositional skills. So those are the five courses that students take during the, the time that they're in the master's program. For those students who are in the add-on licensure program, they get to skip mail 602 and 604, uh, research and assessment. <coughs> and curriculum, understanding that they've already had those courses in previous master's degree programs. Along with their coursework, students have to also have a clinical experience, and that's why we're on the air tonight, is to kind of give you an outline of that clinical experience. It's twofold. The first part of that is an 80 hour each semester requirement that students perform clinical experiences at their site. Um, if I can make this thing work, um, I will now share those um, suggested experiences with you. If these are the 80 hours that works out to one hour a day. Students are to get experiences on your campus. Um, as you can see, we've divided these into a list of leadership opportunities, supervision activities, and technical knowledge. While we're training these students to be an executive leader or principal, eventually we understand and realize that they'll have to be assistant principals first and so we have activities that are most frequently <laughs> performed by assistant principals on this list as well, and they're under the supervision and technical knowledge categories on this list. It is the student's responsibility to document these activities on a list, and all you have to do is the site mentor assign that list at the end of the semester. There's no work for you to do in either task stream or blackboard. I will show you at this time, hopefully, um, what that log looks like. It's very simple. It's just a spreadsheet. And the student is required to fill this out and then you sign it at the end of the semester. That again is, you don't have to keep the list for them. We would hope that you would enter into a partnership with them in terms of planning when they can do those activities, but it's your responsibility only to sign their list that they keep at the end of the semester. Okay. The other half of their clinical experience is that students are required to create and submit an electronic portfolio in TaskStream. Now those students work on that portfolio in Blackboard, 
which Gardner Webb University uses as its data and class management system. And they work on that portfolio, and then once it's ready, they upload the task stream, which is a um, repository of work. But it's a demonstration portfolio. They are required to do <coughs> a DRF or direct response folio, which contains evidences, just like principals in North Carolina are required to present evidences at the time of their evaluation. And they also create and upload items or artifacts into a competency folio. So they have a direct response folio for evidence artifacts, and there are six of those. Um, and then they have a competency folio that are simply artifacts or evidence that they did the things that they said, both in their clinical experiences and in their <laughs> evidence artifact work. The six evidences that they're required to do in their electronic portfolio are the APSEL, the APTEL, the OMA, the SKIP, the CAP, and the SOP. I know those terms don't mean much to you, those acronyms, but they <laughs> mirror the school improvement planning process. The APSEL is form a PLC, desegregate test scores, and do a closing the gap academic program at your school. The APTEL is creating a staff development model. The OMA is <clears throat> Uh, a management system where they learn <clears throat> how to develop uh, a master schedule, supervision schedule, and duty roster. The SKIP is for uh, school and community parent partners. The CAP is uh, cultural awareness as well as discipline. And the SOP puts all the first five together into a workable school improvement plan. Uh, mirrors, as I said, the process um, that principals go through to develop their own school improvement plan. Let me open this door again. All right. <clears throat> let me let me show you what that looks like. Um, go back to my desktop here. And there we go. This would be their direct response folio that has their evidence artifacts. They upload those here along with their competency analysis, their dispositions. We do require them to do self-assessment and we also assess their soft skills or dispositions. We know that those are very important. Uh, they do that three times and we do a dispositional check on them three times. Um, they, they do a competency analysis of how well they're achieving the purpose of, of meeting the 21 competencies for school administrators in North Carolina. Uh, and then they upload their final competency folio once they have created three rounds of evidences or artifacts that go in there. And then their internship log, once they're all signed and squared away and they have their hours, they upload those for evaluation. And so this is the direct response folio. Again, you don't have to be involved in this, but just know that students are creating a demonstration portfolio for state grading for their licensure. Uh, along with that, we're, we ask them to keep a competency folio. They have to create one. Here's one that I've created for myself, um, in which they have to put documentation or artifacts, things that have been created, uh, both in their clinical experience, the 80 hours every semester, and by doing their evidence artifact work, um, they have to give us proof of that in this folio. They have to create a folio and they have to upload documents, pictures, screenshots, different icons or artifacts that show that they did what they said. Also embedded in these 21 competencies, again, they do three rounds of these for a total of 63. But one of those rounds has to be digital, digitally based competencies. Um, and so uh, those are also embedded in these. All of these are part and parcel of the 21 competencies uh, from North Carolina Executive Standards. Uh, and the evidence artifacts represent the 37 descriptors of the seven North Carolina Executive Standards. So we have linked our program to not only uh, North Carolina Evaluation Manual Executive Standards, but also national standards as well. So if we were to look at, I hope that you can see this, if you would look at our handbook, which um, has all the tasks and the directions for the six evidence artifacts, um, if we scroll on down, 
when we look at the grading rubric for these, you will see that we have <clears throat> aligned the work that students do in their clinical experience to CAPE standards, uh, PSEL standards, ISTE standards, um, and elements of the seven executive standards for, for North Carolina executive leaders, and also the NISL standards. There they are, the NISI standards. So we have aligned all of this work with all of these national standards so that students, number one, get a, a valid, rigorous experience, but number two, they can take this degree in certification and use it to, to obtain certification in other states as well. So <clears throat> there's our, there's our handbook. There's, it has an outline of all the courses. I will send you this later along with all the other documents that I have covered tonight. Um, so that you can, can look over our handbook and our standards and you can look over all the things that go into making of the program. Um, I've covered the list of suggested activities, the internship log, giving you a course description of each of the courses, introduced you to the scale handbook, shown you where the, the electronic portfolio for the six evidences and the competency folio. Um, the last thing that I want to cover with you are dispositional or soft skills. Um, let me look at the chat button right quick. Um, okay, we're good. Okay. Um, the major feedback that we got from uh, one of the groups of our collaborative partners was that uh, an emphasis on soft skills, dispositional skills, uh, that we need to make sure that, that folks have those that, that we produce as graduates. Uh, they, as superintendents and consumers of our product, um, really concerned that our folks are able to um, handle communication face-to-face -face and change management and conflict management face-to-face. -face. Um, we have, uh, although we are an online provider and do offer some face-to-face -face classes, we do offer students the opportunity virtually to do these things face-to-face. Uh, -face. We also uh, have them assess and we assess them by watching their videos. They have to video themselves doing these things. And so um, let me go to a new share here and go back to desktop, share screen, and get out of that one and go back here. So let me. So what we ask students to do, and they have to submit videos to us so that we can watch this, and of course we go out and visit them and we work with them and either face-to-face -face or small group sessions as much as we can. Um, um, and they submit the videos. We look at them in terms, and they have to assess themselves, and we have to look at them in terms of learner development, uh, learning differences, learning environments, content knowledge, application of knowledge and assessment. Now within those, we look for specific skills that students respect learners different strengths, is committed to using learner strengths, takes responsibility for growth and development. And so you know, communication, change management, conflict management, uh, creates environments in which uh, stakeholders feel valued, the kind of soft skills that, that would make them along with their hard skills that we're hopefully teaching them or that they're learning with you clinically uh, that would make them valuable employees in your organization. So again, I think I've covered everything on my list. I didn't want to take too much of your time tonight. Uh, I do appreciate you joining us. If you have questions, let's see. Uh, here's my contact information. You can call me on my cell. There's also the, if you have coursework or instruction, or instructor questions or information about them that you would like, you can email Dr. Neal, uh, <clears throat> or you can call his office, or you can get in touch with Dr. Hamilton or call his office. I'm usually on the road, 
uh, or sometimes on the road. So I'm best reached by cell, but there are our email addresses. We are interested in your feedback, your issues, your concerns. If you have problems or issues with a, with a clinical placement, please let us know immediately and we'll get right back to you and we'll have somebody on site in a day or two um, to address those issues or needs or problems that you have. Um, our program is only as strong as our partners and, and we certainly uh, appreciate your partnership and we'll certainly do what we can to uh, facilitate you on your end. So again, thank you for, uh, for your time and effort and energy for the clinicals that are on your campuses. I know it's, it's a lot of work sometimes for you. Hopefully we have taken much of the administrative overhead, the paperwork away by only having you to sign the log now. We do the rest. And so we appreciate the part that you do and the role that you play. Uh, I'm gonna check the chat for any last questions. Um, and so I think that's all. So again, I'll send out this video, the link to this video on YouTube, as well as the link from this morning session. Uh, I'll also send out the materials that I referenced this evening along with the contact information. Again, thank you for joining me this evening. And thank you for all that you do for our students here at Gardner-Webb.